and um, we can actually uh, we can we can actually now run our clustering algorithm. And the clustering algorithm we're going to use is called k-means. So let's create an object called cl, and we're going to use k-means. And it simply takes the data set. and then the number of groups. Well, actually, I want to see if I can use the data set just columns one through three. Let's see if that works. And then I want to use, oh, it requires you to input how many groups you want. Now, I, I want to cluster this around three groups. We know we created three groups. This isn't, um, we're not really doing a, uh, a supervised learning technique here, but we kind of want to see how closely the algorithm is going to match the clusters to the clusters that we know we created. All right, so let's take a look at, at what it did. Okay, so here is the output for k-means. And here are, okay, so it created three clusters, good. I told it three, it created three. And this is how many data points are in each, 132, 102, and 66. And now, of course, we know that there's some error there. It didn't do a perfect job for us because we know that we created three equally sized groups of 100, 100, and 100. Now, how did it do on the, uh, on the means? Well, we created the first group with the mean of well, actually, I, I'm not going to call it the first group or the second group because when it creates the clusters, it doesn't know that we, that we had created clusters ourselves in various orders. But but I'll tell you that we created three groups for speed for the attribute of speed. Our our means that we input to the normal distribution were were seventy, ninety, and twenty, and so here there's the there's the twenty, there's the ninety. And this is the 70. It's not exactly 70, and the reason is it um, it, it put some into its own. It, it clustered it its own way, and so it put it probably put into this cluster some of the data points that were in the our cluster that had a mean of 20. So it probably lowered it overall. Now here's the clustering vector. So this takes with 300 points. And it tells you which of these clusters that it created that it labeled one, two, and three, it put each of the data points in. So the first point it put in three, the second point it put in it three, put in this cluster, second point it put in this first cluster. So you can see for these first hundred points, which is right to about here it really couldn't decide whether it was in this one or this one. And you can see, you can imagine that they're fairly, they're fairly similar, right? Uh, they both have, you know, middle high speeds where between four and five and, you know, a cycle in the, in the one point something range. So it didn't really have, a, it didn't have an easy time de delineating. But now for the second 100 points, which goes to probably, probably right about here, it uh, put all of them into one, into a certain cluster. It put them all into this cluster here. And then the final 300 points it put into, into this cluster. Okay. So what can we do next? Um, well, if you want to, if you want to get an exact count of, of which ones it got right and wrong, we could create our own table. We can create a matrix that has, um, that has, let's see, it has the fourth column of the, of the data frame we created. That fourth column, if you all remember, we put the group number in it, and then as the second column in our matrix, we're going to put 
we're going to use this CL object that we created here using k-means and then we're going to pull out of that the uh, cluster vector which is this one here and so we're going to put those two right next to each other and then just have a look oh, now I did something wrong okay we really did put them all in order okay what I need to do is I need to specify this is a matrix so I need to specify that I want 300 rows and I want two columns See how that looks. Okay, there we go. So now let's go back up to the top of this. And you'll remember the first hundred points. We call this group one. Of course, the, the numbers one, two, and three are going to you now differ between this and this, but it couldn't decide. But it cuts right down to here, and in this whole set it had trouble distinguishing whether it was one or three. Now from 101 on it got all these right because we had them all in one number and it put them all in one number. Now they're different numbers but that's that's okay. Well, actually, I didn't get them all right. Look this one's wrong. Or I should say different. Uh, what else? Where else? Okay so it did a pretty good job on the second cluster. Then the third cluster, which starts here, did a very good job on. Yep, got all got all of them right in the in the uh, third cluster. Now we can probably visualize this if we wanted. So let's let's do a visual representation of how it did, of how it clustered them. I'm going to plot the uh, the first column of our matrix, and I'm going to color those data points using the number of the cluster from the k-means algorithm. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to give it an x label. And I'm going to give it a Y label. And there it is. So here's 300 data points on the attribute of speed. And you can see that it took, of this cluster here, it actually thought that, for some reason, it thought that these points and these two points were all one cluster. And I think that we would we would not like that answer for these two points. But overall, probably did a, a pretty good job. Um, but between these and between these two, that this is right here is going to be where there's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of data points that we created in the first group of 100, but it maybe wasn't sure whether it was the first group or the third group. It picked out a cluster, and that's because there's, you know, variation. I mean, it was, you know, we created all these points on a distribution, and so there's overlap between this. So that's kind of what we actually what we'd expect. We can do the same thing with cycles. We could do the same thing with where and we can give this whole plot area a title a new line We want to put this title in the outer margin. And I want to put a, lab, um, a legend across all of these. And so you have to 
set this graphical parameter xbd equals na. And then you're free to do a legend that goes across all of them. Now, the first two imp uh, first two parameters for legend are the xy coordinates. Now, it's going to be queuing off the last chart, the last plot that I created. So zero is zero. It would put the plot starting right here. I actually want it somewhere over here. So I'm going to so I'm going to use the same axis here, and I'm going to say not zero and not 250, but minus 800. And then on the y-axis, I'm going to say minus, maybe what's about an inch, so minus 10. And you have to play around with this to get it centered exactly where you want it. Okay, so the first legend item is going to be called clustered as group one, and then clustered as group two, and then clustered as group three. Okay, so those are the words, and then we need a plot char uh, plot character, PCH, and, and we're using the default one, which is one, so that open circle. And we're going to give them each colors, and the color is going to be one through three. And I'd like a horizontal legend. Oh, so that's didn't place exactly where I wanted. Oh, I wanted minus ten. Let's try that. Let's try that again. Of course, now it has it up there too, but. You get the you get the point. Actually, I might do I might redo this whole plot here. Okay, there we go. And so it's now it's colored by how K means wanted to group the data. If I were to add some vertical lines to these charts, it would better illustrate where the clustering didn't match uh, the way we set up the data. Because uh, if you remember, we have, we've had uh, 300 points. The first 100 points were in what was our group one. The second 100 points was what was in our group two and our group three. And so what you would have liked to see from the, from the k-means clustering is everything in here would be one color, everything here in one color, and everything here in one color. And you do see that this group and this group are all homogeneous in the color. Same here and here, same here and here, of course. But um, in, in, the, in the first region here, it's going between the green and the black. And it's choosing sort of a different cluster than the way we created it. We created it, just using speed as an example, with... Uh, a, a mean here and a sort of wide uh, standard distribution, and this one with a mean here and a and a tighter standard distribution. But it looked at it and thought this was a better grouping, uh, and this was a grouping together. And I don't know why what, <laughs> why these uh, points were up here, um, but I suspect uh, no, don't have a guess. Maybe maybe one of you out there has a guess. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the way to add those lines is, I'm showing, showing it up here, is after each plot you do A, B line, and then V is where you're going to put in your x-axis intercepts. So I wanted a line at 100 and 200, and then I'm going to do that at, for each of the plots.